I'm Bobby Martin, and this is my creative perspective. What's up, I'm Bobby Martin. I'm co-founder of Champions Design. In March of 2020, we celebrated our 10 year anniversary. But just a few months before that, I became a father. So I figured I'd share a couple of the things that I've learned during this wild ride. But since March, I've been running a design agency while also dealing with some of the most traumatic events of our lifetime. Surviving the pandemic while shouting Black Lives Matter during the craziest presidential election of our lives. Oh, and did I mention that I'm a new dad? And I've been watching my son grow up and this kid, he just like loves to knock things down. So anytime I build something like a stack of blocks or whatever, he immediately crawls over and I'll knock it to the ground. And then he bursts out in laughter every single time. He gets the biggest kick out of tumbling things over. It's easy, it's fun, and destruction is hilarious. And as easily as it is for him to make things fall, I noticed that it took much longer for him to build things up. See, building is much more complicated. It's more difficult. And sometimes it's more frustrating. Simply placing one block on top of another, and then another, and another, requires more physical dexterity and more mental capacity. To create takes more brain power. It's as simple as that. And there's a pretty big gap between learning to knock things down and figuring out how to create something new. And this isn't just true for kids. It's the same for adults too. To create something from nothing takes ingenuity and finesse and artistry. It takes patience and relentlessness to make something from scratch. And then when you put your creation out into the world, you're totally vulnerable. It takes heart and grit to make something new, something artful. And it takes guts to show it to people. To be creative is to be completely vulnerable. To start a conversation, to publish a manuscript, illustrate a book, or even launch a campaign. But we do it. We do it to make things better tomorrow than they are today. And you're fearless in your discovery. And you're brave in your vulnerability. A little over a year after my son was born, I lost my dad. And although I learned so much from trying to be like him, the one thing that particularly stands out is the idea of over delivering. You see, he grew up a black boy in the Jim Crow South, where very little that he did was perceived as having any value. He had to work smarter and harder just to prove that his life mattered. He approached every task with the utmost pride and dedication, and he always did more than he was asked to do. He'd show up earlier, and leave later. He'd push harder and deliver more. Just enough wasn't a concept that he understood. So if there is any creative lesson I learned from my father, a coach and health professor, it is to do more than you're asked to do. To over deliver. In a field where big ideas are often just beaten into submission and true risk taking is often made measurable, you've got to over deliver. In an industry where even the process of getting the job is set up as a competition, friend against friend and agency against agency, you've got to over deliver.
doing more than you're asked to do. It's an attitude of champions. It sparks creativity. It minimizes vulnerabilities. It encourages building over knocking down. Over delivering encourages us all to do better and to be better. You've got to over deliver. Now, to all my black and brown folks, know that there is a long line of designers and art directors and business owners who have come before you. They may have been left out of our history books. They may not have been the keynote of our conferences, but they do exist. They were there laying the groundwork for us to be able to do what we do today. Artists like Aaron Douglas, a painter and illustrator who made some of the most compelling graphic design of the Harlem Renaissance. I'm sure you've heard of William Golden at CBS, but have you ever heard of George Olden? This brother was a badass art director at CBS also. Herbert Temple, helped make some of the most iconic graphic covers for Jet and Ebony magazines. Romare Beard, a collage artist, also created beautiful editorials. And Elizabeth Catlett, a sculptor, she used her printmaking to build a collection of modular posters. Did you know a brother named Reynold Ruffins helped launch the legendary Push Pin Studios? Donald Cruz, created political campaign posters, and Emory Douglas. He designed the now famous publications for the Black Panther Party. John Morning created visual identity systems for iconic institutions, while Archie Boston launched provocative campaigns shining light on racism and inequality. There's Emmett McBain and Tom Burrell, who founded their own groundbreaking agency and Cheryl Miller, who to this day still writes about disparities in design. There are so many more. They put in the work. They pounded the pavement. They watched as jobs perfect for them went to white designers and ad agencies. They were professionals. They held up their heads and they did what they had to do to make a living, to communicate to the world, and to make a world that communicated to people like them. They forced their foot in the door so that we could have a seat at the table. So now, as we pull up our seats, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to be unafraid? Are we going to build things up? Are we going to over deliver? The answer's up to you. Peace. <laughs>